Somebody, I think it was Pastor Sheila last last week. There was that. Well, how many remember that old song from the seventies or uh, or eighties? Uh, goes something like, "Take the kibble from my hair, <laughs> shake it loose." No, that that one. Yeah, sleeping with the dogs and the cats. <laughs> yeah, right. My furry buddies. But uh, even in in uh, in, uh, in pray for your pastor, he's very sick today, and and. Uh, He'll be, he'll be better. Amen. He'll be back next week Amen. strong as ever. Amen. But uh, even in my, uh, he called me at 7 this morning and asked me if I would, I would share a word with you. So I'm thinking, <laughs> well, I'm not really. <laughs> so I get up. And uh, even in all that's going on in my life, just like it's going in your life, we've got stuff, but we keep pursuing. We get up and we keep yes. fighting the good fight of faith. He didn't say, uh, he said all things were possible. He didn't say all things were easy. Right. Amen. Right. So uh, he answered all this and all the things going on. And, and um, I wake up, get ready, walk out the door, and right there is an answer to my prayer. Right at the front door, an answer to my prayer. Um, a cat showed up. <laughs> <laughs> a few days ago, an orange cat, never seen him before. I open my door and he's standing there looking at me. He just he doesn't my dog answers the door, he doesn't run, he doesn't move, he's just looking at me like I'm here. 
So I get, I get a can of food, and I go out, and I sit with him, and I, I, I give him his food, and I pet in him. And, uh, you know, just praying over all the angels camp about him. I don't know where he's come from. And, and, and I, he finished eating, and I, I'm sitting there, and I, I start petting him again, and he growls at me. So I thought, well, maybe this is a neighbor's cat, because the neighbor's cat's pretty grouchy. I, you know, I mean, I'd only seen him from a distance, so I went over and asked them. And they said, no, that cat usually comes to your house at night to eat food. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, so I opened the door this morning, and there he is. But i got to tell you, I felt so bad the other day. What was it, three days ago I sent you the picture of this orange cat in case he was lost in the neighborhood or whatever. And I felt so bad because he hung around all day. But at, at night... Nine o'clock, that's when I call nighttime, bedtime. He he was out there and so he wants food again. So instead of opening a nice fresh can, I just gathered up the scraps from the day from the rest of and get it to him. You know, I felt so bad. I, okay. All right. I felt so bad because what if this was his last meal? He's homeless. Uh, you know, this is and I just gave him scraps for his last meal. And instead of something fresh and something that's good and, you know, as he, as he goes on his journey. So, so I, I, I just prayed. I hadn't seen him in a couple of days, and I was worried. I felt bad, and there he is this morning. So I got a fresh can of food, <laughs> and I gave him a big old can of food and, and uh, uh, just wanted him to be blessed, you know, in case he's homeless and, you know, it was his last meal. But then I got to think, wow, God, how is it? that we sometimes do that. We give, we give out our scraps. We give out our scraps instead of something fresh from God. And all of us could quote this scripture. My, my message today is about bread. Don't let me forget, I bought this box of bread. This is box of bread. And, I, and, you know, I got to read the label, the thing, and it's, you know, unleavened, you know, <laughs> matzo bread. Because we can all quote that scripture, Our Father who art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give me this day my daily bread. <laughs> Forgive my sins as I forgive those who sin against me. Stop right there. And I, I thought, wow, now I need water. <laughs> Which reminds me, I was going to tell, tell um, Sheila that, that uh, communion bread they had the other day. Which one is Vincent? Could you get me my little bottle of water from over there? You'll not lose your reward. <laughs> Thank you. That, that was so spicy. Anybody have the community? <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> anyway, I bought some bread because I've been thinking about that scripture this week. Give me this day my daily bread. And you know what I mean? In here in America, we're so full, you know, we're really not hungry all the time. I mean, I like cookies all the time. You can give me them day and night, but for hungry for the bread of life. Wow. And sometimes we skip right over that little verse. Give me this day daily bread. But then we jump right in to forgive my sins because we all got sin consciousness, all the things that we, we uh, might have done fall into. But you know, we shouldn't have a sin consciousness. Of course, number one, we shouldn't be living in sin. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. Uh, I'm assuming you, you were, I'm preaching, preaching to the choir here. You've all searched your closets. You've all got rid of things. You've all stopped doing things. In fact, when Pastor Ron and Sheila came over the other day, we were going to sing a song this morning, and they come upstairs to practice, and me and Tammy usually run through the songs, try to find a key, and maybe know the words for Sunday. But uh, I said, come on, and they're sitting there in my little office, and I said, well, we usually sit here first and talk about people. Not just... <laughs> Gotta understand my humor. We don't really do that, amen. Um, you know what? Some this is off. This is a side note. If someone comes to you with a bad report about a sister or brother, you shouldn't say, "Oh, what they do?" You saw the lawyer. <laughs> you should. 
You should say, uh-uh, I know them. They wouldn't do that. You must have been mistaken. You must have seen one. You know, that's not the whole story. You all should always defend and not lean into whatever somebody's saying, talking trash about people. Gossiping, they call it. That should have no place in the body of Christ. You know, you used to, when you go to big churches, it used to be interesting you go in the bathroom, and that's where all the <laughs> Did you see what she was wearing today? <laughs> I remember that. Huh? Yeah. No, 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 no. We don't do that no more. Anyway, the scripture says that you all know, give us this day our daily bread. Before that, he says, your kingdom come here as in heaven. See, our, our destination is to go to heaven, but our assignment is to bring heaven here. Amen. Jesus, when he preached, he says, uh, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He opened the door and said, this is the acceptable year. Let every man return to his father and his inheritance. We always want the sin part, return to our father, oh God, forgive me, but our inheritance. Now, I, I've, been, I've been stepping in a different direction lately. You know, after being a pastor for 25 years, losing my husband, and then you're sort of lost and wondering, okay, what now? And I've, I've uh, been to uh, several places in town that I've stopped to, you know, see if that was the door that was open. Nothing seems to be opening up. So uh, lately, as I'm praying about this daily bread and, and saying, well, you know, the Bible says that give us daily bread not for our, just for ourselves, but that we can have bread to give to others. Because that scripture that I read, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, our Lord, in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Isn't it funny that he put that first in order? Yeah. Before the, the blood, and praise God for the blood, we'd all be lost forever without the blood of Jesus. But he put that first. Isn't that interesting? That was a priority. And the rest of the story comes from... Matthew chapter 16. Jesus has been uh, talking to the Pharisees, those who are just religious. I mean, they've got a lot of theology, but uh, they don't really love people. In fact, uh, I think it was Jeremiah says, I have something against you, pastors and leaders and teachers, because you didn't heal the broken. You didn't uh, give food to the poor. And he also said, this is the fast that I have chosen. Then I might bind up the broken heart, undo the heavy burden, yeah. destroy the bands of wickedness, and let the oppressed go free. That is our calling. That's what we're, that's why we need the, the living bread, daily bread. You know what happened in the Old Testament if you didn't get daily bread? You all know what happened to the bread if you didn't get it daily. What happened? There was worms in it. There was worms. It wasn't good for nothing. So if we're not daily, I'm talking about having a lifestyle of being a Christian. You know what a Christian is? A Christian, a little anointed one. Just like Jesus was anointed, we're anointed, Amen. and we have bread to give. All through the Bible, it talks about bread. And Jesus, in Matthew 16, there was a woman that she, she shouldn't even be coming to Jesus because she was a, a heathen and a Gentile. But she came to Jesus, and she said, Jesus, Thou son of David, Lord, have mercy on me, because my daughter is demon possessed. And she kept crying. She kept, but the religious, even the disciples, those who were around her, said, "Now send her. She listen to her crying to you." And Jesus Himself said, "My job in ministry right now, my mission is to reach the lost sheep of Israel, the children of God." But she kept crying, and she came, and she knelt down by Jesus, and she said, Lord, help me. And he says, it's not right that I should take the, listen to me, it's not right that I should take the children's bread, we're talking daily bread, and give it to dogs, those that Gentiles were outside of the covenant of God. And she said, but Lord, even the dogs get to eat from the crumbs that fall from the table. And Jesus said, your faith in who I am and what I have to give 
Go your way. Your daughter is delivered and healed from demons. And I say to you, if one little crumb from the floor has the power to deliver someone from, she was grievously tormented by devils. How much more will the bread that we, the bread that we daily do for those, if we get the bread fresh. You know when Jesus was out and he was preaching to people and they were hungry and he said, well, let's feed the people. And they said, all we have is five loaves and a few little fishes. But what was left over? Twelve, Twelve loaves. Hmm, that was one for each of the disciples that he called. They all had a, a whole basket of bread to take with them to do the works that Jesus had done. Isn't that funny? In the Old Testament, it's the same way. There were 12 loaves of showbread, one for each tribe of Israel. But the only one that could eat the showbread was a priest. Isn't that good and wonderful that God has made us priests Amen. and kings? Yes. But he's given us daily bread if we'll eat it. Daily bread to give. There's power in the bread. Amen. Daily bread. There's power to deliver. I went to Walmart the other day. Well, this is after church last week. I went to Walmart to take back something that I didn't want, look for something that I didn't need. You know, you know how that goes. And I'm going through the line and I, at the new Walmart, not get a Walmart. And I'm going through the line and, um, you know, this clerk is really frustrated in front of me. She's a young thing, about 30 or so. It's amazing how young has a, a relative meaning. <laughs> Anymore, somebody's 60s is pretty young to me. Just saying. And she said, I asked her, you know, Mom, have, you have a good day, bad day. She said, well, somebody has, you know, something, something. Anyway, what she said, you know, customers were being mean to her. Can you, you can relate to that. Yeah. And, I said, oh, oh okay, um, I pray you have a better day, and I left, and I got out to the car, and all of a sudden, I, that was my opportunity, and I missed it. So I go back in to Walmart, after taking what I didn't need, but I, a couple things on my list, and go back to the car, and I mean, go back into the store, and I thought, well, what can I buy, I've got $5, what can I buy that I need, that I, you know, I don't waste money, so I bought some um, Reese's Pieces cups. <laughs> Gotta have them. And so I go through her line again. And and uh, I say, oh, uh, you know, is it any better? You, I forgot my Reese's Pieces and she's, or cups. And she said, well, I've got to have them. And I said, well, you know, God loves you. And, you know, trying to open the door, trying to get somewhere. And she said, well, I don't believe in God. I'm a Satanist. <gasps> okay. <laughs> and I, I'm trying to think. Right now, God, right now. And customers are coming in behind the line. I'm thinking, well, well, I, well uh, you know, I just said, well, God loves you. But when I got out into the car, I'm telling you this because you all, you're not going to succeed necessarily every time you go out and, and give bread. Right. Sometimes you're going to shove it in the mouth and it's just going to fall down. <laughs> right. And when I got to the car, what I should have said, because remember the power of the bread? One crumb is enough to deliver a demonized person. And don't, don't just get up there and when you're, you're out and going through your every day. This is cr lifestyle Christianity. Don't just start at the top and say, well, you know, you're going to hell. And uh, you need to be saved. And if you bow your head and pray these, you know, uh, Jesus, uh, come into my heart, be Lord of my life. No, you know, it's like, it's like the police pulling over those who can have memorized the, the Miranda warning. You know what I mean? It's just, okay, whatever. You know, the Bible says in John chapter 2.23, when they saw the signs and wonders, then they believed. Amen. John 6 and 2 says, and when they saw the signs and wonders, then they followed. I've noticed in the, the people that I go and try to uh, reach on the streets, all of them are, have been Christians at some time. 
All of them have been Christians. They prayed that prayer. Maybe they even went to church for a while, but they never had an encounter with God. We owe the world, we owe those that we come in contact with a, an encounter with the living God in power Amen. through the bread of life. And when I got to the car, God said, you know what you should have done? You should have said to her, well, I know you're having a bad day, and just run, 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 run. I should have said to her, before you, before I get to the door to leave, the spirit of laughter and joy will come on you, and you will know that there is a God. Oh. If he died for us when we were yet sinners, how much more will he do? Just an itty bitty miracle Amen. to reveal that he is God in this watered down version of Christianity that's gone to the church where you can just do anything. You come in and you just say the prayer you've never experienced, God, and naturally you fall away when, when trials and tribulations and death and all these other things in the real life of a real fallen world happen. But they need an experience with God that he's alive and he loves them and he wants to show himself to you. So I failed on that one. I left there and I drove on down the street going home. I think I, I got... Roseanne, some big Newtons. Dropped him off of her, and I'm going home, and I'm still thinking about this lady, and I look over, and here's a, someone sitting on the corner of 15th and Patterson across from the hospital. They're sort of laying down on the ground there, and I don't know if it's a man or a woman, and I thought, hmm. And you can't just turn around in that corner. I had to go all the way down to 12th Street, through the shopping center, and come back, and by the time I'd gotten back there, the police were there. Living work. And so I get out, park behind the, uh, in the parking spot behind the police car, and here comes the security person from the, the hospital there, see what was going on. And I'm just standing there waiting, you know, about from here to you, he's talking with the girl, and, and it's, uh, it's a woman, and he's checking her once and once, and, and we're waiting and waiting and waiting, and finally he, he gets the thing that she did have. Uh, she was, uh, did have a warrant or something out for being contacted earlier in the day for like a vagrancy or something like that, being in, you know, laying somewhere. And she says, I'm not going to take you in now. And I can understand that the jails would be filled with all those people, right? I'm not going to take you in, but if you're contacted again today, they will arrest you. So she gathered up her basket of her life. And he turns to me and said, you know, can I help you? I said, I just, I just wanted to pray for her. You know, I just driving by, I just passed her, and I just want to pray for her. So he said, okay, go ahead. And so I went and I introduced myself, asked who she was, and her name was Samantha. And, okay, and so, well, uh, Samantha, you know, I just want to pray for you. You know, God loves you. Is there anything I can do for you? Do you, do you need anything? And so I just uh, let her in just a short prayer. God, reveal your love to her. And asked her if she needed anything, and so she said, uh, well, I could use a few things. Well, he asked her where City Market was. And so I said, okay, I'll meet you at City Market, and we'll pick up a few things that you need. Okay, now, this lady had, had, um, what do you call them? Tattoos. No, not tattoos. Uh, sort of getting close. scars, acne, sores. Sores all over her face because she was a heroin addict. And so I said, I'll meet you at uh, uh, City Market. We'll pick up a few things. So we go down there. It takes her a while to get there. I went home and let the dog out and came back to City Market. And, and so I'm there. She, there she was. And I was wondering, was she going to show up or she's just going to blow me off or just, you know, whatever. So we got into City Market and I said, well, because um, she walked all that way and she was fast. Uh, you know, I, she was really fast and I could hardly keep up with her in the store I said well why don't we go get a coffee and just sit down because you, you're hot and you've been walking all this way so let's just go get a Starbucks and let's sit down and visit because I wanted to have an opportunity to hear her story and the opportunity to pour into her and give my testimony and so she sits down she, Started talking. She told me she was addicted to heroin and that was her life she'd been in, she used to be in Utah 
She came that close to, to going to the temple to be, I don't know, whatever they do in the temple, baptize you into eternal life, whatever. And she said, but that fell through, and I'm thinking to myself, oh, right, we got an opportunity here. So I told her that God loved her and that uh, gave her my testimony, how what God had delivered me from, and, and, uh, and all the brokenness that he healed, because people who use drugs usually use it to cover up pain and hurt, or abuse, or, or, and it could be just they wanted to get high, get, have a party down, and now it's got a hold of them and won't let go. So I prayed for her deliverance, that God would do for her what he'd done for me. Samantha is her name. So I'm excited about seeing Samantha at some of the different places that they have and seeing her life change. Amen. But we have to have living bread and then step out when the opportunity comes. Amen. To open a door and don't start at the top with praying the, uh, the, the sinner's prayer. Let them experience the love of God, that God is real. That's what daily bread is all about. In your workplace, Tony, in your workplace, you go to uh, all around the city. I remember when my husband and I did landscaping, I remember a guy in, in, in Fruta, right there on that side of the highway we went, and he was, had kidney problems, and he was sick. He didn't look like he'd make it. And so we, can we pray for you that those kidneys be healed? We went back there next year. He was great. Amen. He was great. Jesus. Amen. But daily bread. Remember, our purpose isn't just to wait here till we get to heaven. Our purpose is to bring heaven here. The reality of the presence of a living God who's powerful. We just talked about his power. But we need to say, God, I want that. Not just for me to hold, but for bread to give to people. Amen. For bread for Christina. Healing power for your friend. Nothing will wake up a person and get them on fire for the living God who you can approach only through Jesus Christ than having God work in their life. Amen. So God's looking for those who are dealers this morning, dealing bread, <laughs> dealing the bread of life. Everywhere you go, I think I shared this maybe last time I was with you, but I, I was in uh, the grocery store, and I'm just, this was a couple months ago, and I'm just starting out. God, I'm working your field, you know, I'm going to whatever door you open. Just, and I was in the grocery store, and I just read that scripture, lift up your eyes, for the fields are white under harvest. So I go to the grocery store, and I say, okay, God, your word says lift up your eyes, uh, for the fields are white. And I lift up my eyes, and he said, not that hard. <laughs> See, God's got, a, uh, God's got a sense of humor. Yes. But we have to be intentional Christians. Amen. Deliberate Christians and have something to give. We're, we're Pentecost. Thank we're supposed to have something to give. It's not just about joy. It's not just about shouting. It's about leaving the church with living bread refilled because you've eaten, not only on Sunday, but every day. What if we left church today and we didn't go out to eat? We went and gave living bread to all those that are crying around us for the bread of life to change their life. You know, we might not be good at it, but that, that doesn't give us the, the right to change the mission and the message of the gospel, that we're to go to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons, be the love of God and the power of God in the earth. Otherwise, we might as well just put New Horizons Methodist Church Come on. or Lutheran or Unit Unitarian Church. If we don't have power to go with the child, Nothing wrong with people shouting, but when they have feet hit the ground, they better have some power to go with it. And some holiness and sanctification. Yeah, when I got saved, I just went through my house and threw out things that shouldn't have been there. What time is it? You got 30 minutes, bro. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and there's a lot of Christians in a lot of bondage. A lot of uh, Christians hooked on pornography. Uh, drugs to get through the day, Prozac, whatever, whatever you're going to use. What? And I remember, I'm uh, back in the 70s, right? Remember Penthouse? Raise your hand. No, don't raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> yes, kidding. But there was another magazine that came out about then for us ladies. Anybody remember what it was? Huh? 
Oh my gosh! Sanctify her holy unto you, Lord God. Playgirl. I remember when that came out. Some of you older ones that might not know what that is, but that was the, uh, the women's answer to Playboy magazine. And I can remember, I'm a new Christian, I can remember walking past the counter, because they always have it in there, laying there, you know what I mean? And I'm thinking, maybe if I, you know, it's a buy and look, right? So I, I'm slowing down, slowing down, and nope, no, 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 no. I mean, there was a physical fight in my body to get out to the car. So just because we come to church on Sunday doesn't mean everything's hunky-dory in our home, but we need to keep fighting the fight of faith and not make excuses for what we're doing, but get rid of all the junk and start being men and women of power. To see our world change. Like Joel, you're praying for Joel? Oh my gosh. Wouldn't it be awesome. You saw him outside doing something, and you walked over and you said, How's it going, Joel? And he said, Well, check out this, I can't see you. Let me just show you what God can do. Yeah. Because God loves you. And he doesn't, doesn't believe in God or they don't serve God, but that's okay. God wants to show him his That's love. Right. Right. You just lay on hands on him because you've gotten living bread that morning. Amen. You walk across the street and you give him living bread and God heals him. I want you to know his whole attitude toward God and church and the people of God will change. That's what we need. We're people of power. Not our own power. It's flowing through us. But he said to heal the sick, to cast out de devils and raise the dead. That's right. He said, you just healed the sick a while ago. Man. Huh? You just healed the sick. Praise God. Did you tell me better? Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yeah. She said she was going to have to leave maybe in the service because her tummy was, amen, we prayed for her. Oh, God, we just want you to do that everywhere we go. Amen. Amen. Everywhere we go. People want to know who we are. We are the Christians, mighty, mighty Christians. Yeah. That's, that's all I know from my high school days. Amen. Praise God. Anyway, so what would happen this afternoon if, if, yes, if we went out with living bread? Instead of going and get carnal bread at the store and paying $40 for it, what if we got free bread, living bread, and we're driving down home or we stop at the store or wherever and our eye catches something? You know what you mean? That, that eye that the Spirit of God causes you to catch, you'll never forget it? Amen. I can remember people that I failed that are still in my mind because that was the will and the purpose of God in that hour. So now I'm a little more intent. It's a training. We have to train ourselves. God will not uh, say, oh, you're just a horrible... No. He says, all oh, right, one of mine is out there trying and growing. Amen. It's better than all and sit in the pews and don't try and don't go because that's what we've been called to do. Amen. Praise God. So anyway, did I finish my stories about the the uh, a little Samantha is her name? Amen. So who are you going to encounter today? Who are you going to encounter today that needs to know that God is real? Oh, okay, they're a Christian. They've been in church a hundred years, right? Uh, but they don't know him as Lord and as God Almighty. Come on. Come on. They have a good theology, but they left that a long time ago because they had no power and reality in their life. It's up to us to change their, their thinking, for them to see who God really is, who he's been in your life. You've got a testimony. You all got a testimony. You all can reach somebody. That's right. Amen. Living bread. That's, that's what God wants us to do. Daily bread. Yes. Now that costs you something, huh? I mean, you can cook, turn on the coffee in the morning, that sort of takes care of itself, right? But to get bread, you have to go before God and before his presence to take time to get that bread. Not yesterday's bread, because remember that has worms in it. To get living bread and to hand it out to the masses that we pass everywhere who have a knowledge of God but have not experienced God in their life. And that opens the door for their souls to be saved, for them to return to the God of their childhood. Amen. Amen. Let's stand this morning.
And Erlinda, wants to go. she wanted to pray for, she wanted a prayer cloth. And is Peggy waiting for this prayer cloth, your friend? Yeah, well, I think she's going to see her tonight. Okay, she knows you're bringing it tonight, today? Okay. You got the prayer cloth? The Bible says that from the handkerchiefs of Paul, the, the anointing flowed. The anointing that was on him flowed. Now, you're born of the Spirit. And I pray the Spirit rested upon you because we praise God, we worship Him. And she told her friend Peggy that she would get a prayer cloth today that she could bring home to give to Peggy's daughter Christine who only has six months to a year to live. So we're going to do that because that's where Peggy's faith is. Is You told her you would bring a cloth from church. She asked you for it. So that's where their faith is. So when we come, we're praying, God, let that anointing that you've given me, that life flow into this, this uh, piece of cloth that when Peggy gives it to Christine and tells her this is the church, this is the cloth that we got from the house of God, and she receives that virtue, life, that bread of life will flow into Christine and she will be made whole for the glory of God. So those of believers will gather around and we'll pray over this cloth. No, I didn't. Now, really, the, the anointing oil is coming from you. So we'll just gather around, get around here so we can touch this cloth. Just lay hands on this cloth, everybody. And the anointing that is within you, I want you to deliberately let the river flow. He says there's a river within you. It's time to let it flow into this cloth. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are your, your people, Lord God. There's living water in us because you said so. And right now, we ask that that living water of life would flow into this cloth, Father, that the anointing, the anointing of Jesus Christ to heal the sick and raise the dead would come upon this daughter Christine. Whatever disease there is, oh, Father God, whatever's going on in her body, we command it to bow to the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, flow and bring recovery to every organ, all the tissues, everything that's been damaged in her for the glory of the living God. Flow through us in the name of Jesus and to this cloth and give Arunda the wisdom and the words to speak to, to, uh, to Peggy, to tell her this is the cloth from the house of God, touched by the hand of God, that it heal your daughter for the glory of God in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Praise God. We're going to just in Okay. You love it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise you for being a little worker. Did you bring it? Yeah, you've got some living bread there. Amen. Praise God. A worker for the kingdom. Hi, Vincent. We're going to pray for you, okay? What's wrong with you? Hmm? Nothing. He just has ADHD. He's still the one to put him on some really harsh medications. Oh, yeah. You want Jesus to heal you? Yes, we do. You do want Jesus to heal you? Amen. Yes. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you would be glorified. Whatever the 